the Ambenek RJ Arcas and Arcday returns to the single Linux and dual boot with Android options that we first saw in the Ambenek RJ353V and VS models. Has anything improved to make it worthwhile spending a bit extra on the ArcD with dual boot? Keep watching and I'll let you know. The box contents for both models are the same apart from the colours. First we have the Ambenic Arc itself which we will check out in more detail shortly. There is a USB Type-C charge cable. Next we have a 128 or 256 gigs micro SD card. There is a user manual which is in English and Chinese on the other side. And last but not least, there is a screen protector and wipes for when applying it. The Ambernic RG Arc measures around 7.5 by 3.14 by 2.2 inches and weighs 242 grams. The Arc S model is available in transparent black and blue colours and the Arc D available in black and grey. The controller design is inspired by the classic Sega Saturn controller, together with the D-pad and six buttons on the front. The start button along with the select button are near the top on either side of the display. The display is a 4 inch IPS with a 640x480 resolution which is great for retro gaming. The Arc D model is touchscreen as it uses Android OS. Along the top there are the usual left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There are two USB Type-C ports, one for data and one for charging. There is a mini HDMI port for output to a TV or monitor. Next we have a function button to bring up the menus, a volume rocker and power button. On the bottom are two micro SD card slots. The first has a 16 gigs card for Linux OS and the second slot is for your 128 or 256 gigs card for game storage. Both models come with the much used RK3566 quad core processor running up to 1.8 GHz. The Arc S model has 1 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and the Arc D has 2 GB. Both models come with 16 GB card for Linux and the Arc D has an additional 32 GB eMMC internal storage for Android. Both models feature Wi-Fi 5 for internet connectivity and Bluetooth 4.2 to connect any wireless peripherals. They both have a 3500 mAh rechargeable battery. You can expect up to 6 hours of usage depending on the emulator you are running. The Arc D as mentioned runs Android, so we performed some benchmarks to see the performance compared to other Android devices including the RJ353M and V models which use the same CPU. For 3D Mark Slingshot we saw a noticeable difference in performance compared to other devices using the same CPU. In Geekbench, the single and multi-core scores were also a bit higher on the same chipset models. And for Antutu, we again saw a noticeable performance increase over the same chipsets. We do see an overall higher performance on the Arc D compared with the other handhelds used in the RK3566 chipset, but it is the lowest performing chip in our benchmarks, with large differences compared to other, albeit more expensive, handhelds. Both the Arc S and Arc D have Linux OS to use. This is a pre-configured setup with the emulation station style user interface. The layout is a little different due to the theme choice, but you can change to a more visual one in the settings. The emulators menu is for emulators independent of RetroArch. These include Sega Naomi Arcade, Dreamcast, Saturn and PlayStation Portable. And the RetroArch menu is a fuller list of compatible emulator cores, which include various handhelds such as the Game Gear and Wonderswan, 8-bit consoles including the Master System, in between with the PC Engine and 16-bit systems such as the Genesis or Mega Drive. You can also find arcade systems and emulators including CPS, MAME, Neo Geo etc. You can browse the available systems with the D-pad, choose one to enter that system's games list and select a game to play. Whilst running the game from the RetroArch selection and some of the individual emulators you can tap the function button to bring up the menu. For RetroArch in particular you can access all the usual functions such as saving and loading states, take screenshots, restart the game, change the controls and so on. We have also noticed that many of the emulators now have a bezel. Depending on the system you may have a very small TV light design and on handhelds a larger one to fill in the blank space. It's a nice touch from Ambenic and I believe it's the first time they have done this by default. 
As a note regarding the controls, due to there being no analogue stick, some games may require this for the game to be playable. In some cases, you can simply go into the emulator settings and redefine the analogues to use the D-pad. However, if games use separate digital and analogue controls for functions, this will cause a conflict and not work. This applies to both Linux and Android OS. Overall, the emulators all work very well. You won't have any issues with the 8 and 16-bit systems. Going up a level to PS1 and Dreamcast, you may see occasional drops in frames on the PS1, but nothing major. And for Dreamcast, we see mixed performance. Some games work great, but some will run around half the speed. For the Drastic emulator, we get decent overall performance. Keep in mind, for the Arcast model, there is no touchscreen support, so you may have issues with games that require it. For the PSP, we found very mixed performance depending on the game. With our go-to game, God of War, we get low frame rates below 30. Some frame skipping will make it more playable though. Other, far less demanding games will run fine, but I wouldn't buy this if the PSP is your main choice of games to play on it. The RG Arc D features dual boot to Android OS, accessed by removing the slot 1 card. Upon first boot, you get a welcome screen which takes a couple of minutes to set up all the apps etc. As a note, there is no Google Play Store support, but you can download and install your apps or install from an SD card if you wish to. We had no problems updating some of the emulators. The initial screen is empty, but you can slide up the screen to show a list of apps and drag and drop your favourite ones to the main screen. You have two options here for accessing the emulators. The quick way is with the Ambonic front end, or the longer way which involves some setting up. The quick way simply involves sliding the pull down menu and tapping the game mode icon. This will load the Ambonic front end. The first time loading will take longer as it scans your storage card for games. Once loaded, it will have sorted your game collection into the respective systems. You can then browse with a touchscreen or d-pad and run a game. Like Linux, it uses a mix of RetroArch and individual emulators for the supported systems. The second option is a bit more involved and will usually require you to at least configure the controls and your game path for each emulator. This can be useful for emulators that the Ambonic frontend does not support, but otherwise I would go with the Ambonic frontend. Performance is essentially the same for 8 and 16 bit systems, you won't see any difference in performance there. This is much the same for PlayStation 1 emulation, maybe an occasional frame drop here and there but nothing game breaking. Dreamcast emulation is roughly the same performance levels we saw on Linux. For the Drastic emulator, we get the same performance on Linux which is very good. With touchscreen support it does make many more games playable which is definitely a bonus. For PSP you will see minor differences in performance compared to the Linux version. Some games run a bit smoother, but with this processor you're not going to see miracles. There are also Dolphin and Eva SX2 emulators, but again with this processor you will not get any but the most basic games running at playable levels. The Ambonic Arc is a nice change from the usual horizontal and vertical brick style designs. I like the Saturn controller inspired design a lot. It feels nice in your hands and the display takes up all the available space on the front. The controls are great, the D-pad especially feels excellent. It's the best D-pad so far from Ambonic. As to which model you should buy, the Arc S or Arc D. There is around a £10, $10 price difference, so it's not a massive amount. But if you are on a budget, it can be worth saving some money here. Both models overall see the same performance across all of the emulators. The Arc D does have more RAM and internal storage, though this is mainly for use by Android. Having a touchscreen may be an important factor if you prefer navigating with that, or for playing more games with the Drastic emulator. With Android, you do also get a few more emulators, but these are the higher end ones and not so suitable for this processor. But you do have the opportunity to download other emulators that are not included, say for example computers like the Amstrad or Commodore 64. If you are on a budget, then go for the Arc S. You can save yourself a few pounds and dollars and overall get the same standard experience. Personally, I would in this case go for the Arc D. For a bit extra, you get a fair amount more. If you don't mind spending some time to download and configure new emulators, you would not otherwise get with the Arc S. You can learn more and order the Ambonic, RJ, Arc S and Arc D from us at droix.co.uk or droix.net for international shipping. 
And if you are planning to buy the RG Arc, check out our Getting Started guide which covers everything from setting up, adding extra games and much more. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to Droix so you won't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next one.